Okay, right, yeah, Jesse. Thank you for joining us this evening, regular scheduled council meeting of the Park City City Council, May 22nd, 2018 at 7 p.m. Danielle, would you call the roll? John Leonard? Here. George Glover? Here. Ben Salceda? Here. Melvin Kerr? Here. Tom Jones? Here. George Capps? Here. Randy Bailey? Here. Jim Schrader? Here. A quorum is present, Your Honor. Thank you. Tonight, Pastor Johnny Whitmore is going to lead in the invocation, and Councilwoman Brandy Bailey is going to lead in the pledge. If everybody please stand. Pray with me, please. Our gracious Heavenly Father, again, we just thank you for a wonderful day. Lord, we just thank you for your many blessings that you give to this country. And Lord, we ask tonight that you just, each council member here, Lord, you just give them a blessing and just give them wisdom and just uh, power to do the right thing that they need to do. And Lord, we just give you the honor and praise. We just thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. George? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. And Jim? And I second that. I got a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. We don't have anything for awards or presentations this evening, and nobody signed up to speak at public forum. So we'll move on to our staff reports, and we'll start with Rick Norman, our Director of Public Works. Rick? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Public Works report for this evening, May 22nd, 2018. Uh, first of all, our park department, uh, we have completed a rotation for uh, spraying for weed control in Grove Parks. Uh, that has a pre-emergent in it, so we're hoping for uh, that that will last for a while. Uh, we've also completed uh, repairs at the skateboard park. We had a company come in and complete uh, some work on the frames and two panels on that. On um, our brush and limb day last Saturday, we had a good turnout for that. We ended up with 105 loads. Uh, as compared to last year, one year ago, we had 54, so we just about doubled our load count on that. Our street department, uh, we have completed a rotation of mowing our medians of hydraulic and 61st. Have completed a road right of way spraying around the guardrails, post signs, and uh, tree rings. We did, uh, median was removed on 61st for traffic control, and we just got the word today, uh, starting next Tuesday. They're going to uh, do traffic control for that entire area. They're going to set up barricades, and basically the outside lanes will be the through lanes. That will start next Tuesday morning, and the uh, work is expected to last for two weeks for this phase of uh, the bridge project. Uh, Water and Sewer Department. We uh, had an average for the first two weeks of uh, May for 21 work orders per day. Rick, just want to tell you a couple things. Got some positive comments on Brush and Went and Limb Day. So I appreciate everybody, you and your crews that were out there taking care of that. The other thing, I just want to elaborate a little bit more on the bridge work on 61st Street. So that construction that starts is going to be while well, AT&T relocate some of their lines to prep for when we start doing the bridge construction. So this is just a the phase one, and it's going to be a couple of weeks, and it's going to be a pain over there um, to get through. But once that gets done, it's just going to help the process of the demolition and the install of the new bridge. So this is a piece that needed to be done right away. Um, and that's one of the reasons why that median is removed is because it's we're going to have to navigate the traffic through there, and it's kind of going to be a headache for a couple of weeks. We, we do expect that to be a little bit congested uh, uh, 
ask for everyone to be patient and cautious in through there. Um, I think we're a step ahead this time on the utility relocation. We've started early on that, so based on what I know now, I'm more confident than on 53rd Street, so we're doing the things now prior to the exactly. construction, so hopefully this will pay off in the long run. Does anybody have any questions for Rick? Not seeing any. Thank you, Rick. That was all we had from staff reports this evening, so we'll move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? Jim? I move that we approve the consent agenda. And Melvin? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. That brings us to item A under new business, which is a presentation of the 2017 financial audit with Russell Shipley, the auditor, with Stink and Gordon and Associates. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, council men and women. Um, hopefully everybody has either electronically or a paper file in front of them, two separate letters and the audit report itself. I used a microphone very loud. Um, I'll usually start with the, the uh, required communication to the council. Um, on this letter, I go over a few things. One of them would be uh, basically during the audit, did not have any difficulties encountered, um, did not have any disagreements with management. Um, working with, with Danielle and her staff um, was wonderful, had no problems, uh, no issues, any questions that arose, answered quickly um, and efficiently. So no issues there whatsoever. Um, overall, no, no problems with the audit. On the other letter, uh, basically I want to just briefly cover some recommendations. Um, overall, on these recommendations, I didn't have any issues. I don't foresee, I didn't have any, you know, I don't see any issue, nothing, nothing incorrect, just some areas of strengthening of some controls and, and potential processes put into place. Uh, one of them with, you know, part of our uh, procedures, we do different interviews, different um, steps through the, the audit during the piece. Um, we talked with some people at the front desk this time and just talked about controls. So it, it, an area there we'd like to recommend is, as far as um, receipt giving is to give a receipt out for every transaction. There are some transactions of receipts were not given. Um, so as far as a, a lack of you know, potential um, areas of control there, that would be a good place to um, implement some additional control. I'm talking with even them tonight, they might have already implemented these procedures since we were out here for the audit during February. The other one um, is with, with the court area, or yeah, the court. Um, there's tickets that are voided on a routine basis or a, you know, as needed basis, whether it's direction from the, from the judge or a police chief or so on. Um, and really, I didn't see any issues there, minus there's no procedures in place at the moment to track voided tickets and tra trace them back to what's been voided to the actual ticket. Um, so talking with Danielle, you know, as far as getting that procedure in place, um, having that oversight and overlook there ought to fix any issues that might arise there. So nothing that came up about that, just procedures in place that would help um, strengthen up controls. Uh, as far as the audit itself, just want to go over a few things here. On pages one through three is your audit report or audit opinion. Um, basically, these three pages are what the auditor is responsible for. The rest of the audit report is management's responsibility. Uh, that basically covers page one. Uh, page two, you guys are on a regulatory basis of accounting. You do have a gap waiver that you adopt every year to get away from gap and therefore do the regulatory basis, KMAG basis of accounting, which is a uh, regulatory basis adopted by the state of Kansas. In that third paragraph, third section there on page two, you have an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level you could have in an audit. Um, everything is fairly presented as far as your financial statements go. So. That's what you're looking for, that's what you want. So um, page three just discusses that you have supplementary information and that you have comparative information in regards to um, your information on their schedules, comparing 16 and 17 information. Pages four and five is your financial statement. This is a summary statement of all your funds, starting with your beginning cash, unencumbered balance, have your receipts, your expenditures for the year, ending unencumbered cash balance. Um, then you have a column for your accounts payable or encumbrances at 1231, and then actual cash at year end is the far right column. What I look for in this statement, 
is in the two cash columns, the far right and a third to the right, the unencumbered cash. If there's any negative cash balances there, you'd have a cash violation. If you do not have any negative cash, so all your cash is in a good place, you don't have a cash violation, which would be um, an area of concern potentially. So no cash violations, which is great. Pages 6 through 21 are your notes. I just want to stop on page 15. That is your debt. Um, outstanding debt at year end and activity throughout the year. You had a couple issuances of debt, um, a series 2017 geo bond and a series 2017 temporary note uh, related to different projects. Um, page 16 is your future payments of debt. Um, you guys are fully aware of probably what's going on here, but that's just a footnote that breaks out the debt, your future payments, and your current activity. Uh, the other place I like to point out usually is on page 21. It's your first schedule. If I'm going too fast, you can slow me down. Uh, but it, it basically shows your funds that are budgeted. It shows your certified budget compared to your actual expenditures that occurred during the year. And the far right-hand column, um, it's a variance as far as of over or under budget. If it's a negative amount there, you're under budget, and that is, that is good. If it's a positive amount, you've spent more than what you have budgeted, and you have a budget violation um, during the year. You have no budget violation. All funds were spent with, in accordance with your budget. So again, that's always good news and what we look for as well. So uh, pages 22 through the very end um, are your individual fund receipts and expenditures uh, compared to budget. If they have a budget, if not, there's compared to prior year. Uh, so you have comparative basis here um, in more detail. And on page 51, the last page, is, is schedule three is your agency funds uh, broken down again by beginning cash, receipt, disbursements, any cash. That's pretty much your audit report in a summary fashion. Any, any questions on what we have here? You just want to touch real quick on the library funds and how, how you had that recommended and had that moved out. On what's that? The library funds. On last year, they were I had them up yes. as, they were listed as special revenue funds um, in past audits, even before we started. I left them there last year after going through what they were, um, how they're supposed to be track and really, you know, they're really a related municipal, municipal entity for you guys, not a special revenue fund for you guys. So I just reclassed them, it's not really a reclass, just moved them from on statement one from a related, from a special revenue fund down to a related municipal entity. It's just a movement of where they're located on statement one. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? That's it. Wonderful. The only thing that I'd ask is, is there any recommendations or areas that you would, you saw that we could do some improvement or anything? Um, that's that's kind of what that letter is, and that's, that's I mean, we've had probably other discussions uh, with Danielle and her staff as far as minor things that um, we don't feel even need to be in writing, but the ones in writing are the areas that were, you know, a little bit more elevated. Again, no, I didn't see nothing there that was done incorrectly, just areas of that, you know, if controls aren't in place, it could be taken advantage of, basically. You can't but. read how severe you think they are, and that's why I'm asking. I mean, yeah, I, I, I listed them as a control deficiency. I mean, if I felt they were even, any more severe, they'd move up to a significant deficiency okay. or potentially material weakness, um, which if you have material weakness, you want to be on top of that right away. Significant deficiency is kind of in the middle, and kind of a control deficiency here is um, there's a risk, um, you know, relatively you know, minor, but there's still a risk that, you know, you probably want to take advantage of. of Correcting it before, if anything would happen, anything would happen. So, okay, thank you. Yep, John. Uh, not seeing where there's any more comments, so I will make a motion that we make a matter of record that we receive and file the 2017 financial audit. Okay, George. Yeah, I'll second that. And we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor, <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. The next item on the agenda, item B, which is to consider a resolution of the governing body of the City of Park City, Kansas, determining the advisability of issuing taxable industrial revenue bonds for the purpose of financing the acquisition, construction, and equipping of a commercial facility to be located in said city and authorizing the execution of related documents. Sarah's not here this evening, so... She's not. Good evening, my name is Dominic Eck. I'm with Gilmore and Bell, and I'm Sarah for the evening. <laughs> um, 
a lesser version. Now, she regrets that she can't be here and uh, sends her regards and, and looks forward to seeing you next time um, when, when she'll be back in town. This evening, we have a resolution to approve a uh, resolution of intent IRBs for the Park Industrial LLC project in an amount not to exceed $13,200,000. This resolution of intent will allow the tenant, uh, Park Industrial LLC, to apply for and obtain a sales tax exemption certificate so that they can start on their construction and uh, use that certificate in that process. Uh, we will follow up with a amending resolution of intent at your next meeting. At that meeting, there will be the public hearing that you customarily are used to uh, when you deal with IRBs, which is required if there's going to be ad valorem property tax exemptions. And at that time, you'll also go through the required cost-benefit analysis that goes along with the property tax exemption piece of this. But because the developer um, was eager to get the project going, this is a way to let them get that application for the sales tax exemption in in a more timely fashion so that they can start construction quicker um, due to publication requirements and the public hearing requirements that go along with the ad valorem taxation process. So, uh, like I said, this, this resolution will authorize the tenant to start. They'll be able to apply for the sales tax exempt certificate. We'll follow up with the ad valorem property tax piece, which will just be an amending resolution um, at your next meeting after we publish the publish the notice of the public hearing. We'll have a public hearing and whatnot. So happy to answer any other questions that council may have at this time. Does anybody have any questions? Dan, do you have anything on hand? Yeah. I don't really have any questions either. I think you addressed everything I had on my mind, so I would go ahead and make a motion that we approve the resolution of the governing body of the City of Park City, Kansas, determining the advisability of issuing the taxable industrial revenue bonds for the purpose of financing the acquisition, construction, and equipping of a commercial facility to be located in said city and authorizing the execution of related documents. Okay, and Tom, I would second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. Daniela, would you call the roll? John Leonard? Aye. George Glover? Aye. Ben Salceda? Aye. Melvin Kerr? Aye. Tom Jones? Aye. George Capps? Aye. Brandy Bailey? Aye. Jim Schroeder? Aye. And that resolution passes 8 0. That's resolution 991 2018. Thank, Thank you, very you very much, much. and we'll see you at our next one. That brings us to item C, which is considering the hiring of a new part-time seasonal park person to be funded from the 2018 General Fund Budget Park Department. Dana. Thank you, Mayor Mann and Council, for considering this action this evening. I uh, wanted to just do a brief overview of our parks and our current staffing structure so that you would have a little more information to better make a determination. Um, just a review of the parks, and I'm sure everyone is very familiar with the parks, but for the public as well, we do have eight city parks. And listed, you will see that that goes from McLean, Jardine, Primrose, Perry Wynn, Habiger, Poston, Memorial, and Osage Park. We put the acres beside there so that you can see that the park department is responsible for maintaining about 70 plus acres of parks in the city. And being Park City, we do consider this to be a key element of our city, and we're very, very happy to have this. <clears throat> and you're probably familiar with a lot of the different things that are in parks. We've got two ponds, we've got shelters, we've got a variety of playground equipment, several berms, lots of trees, sidewalks, and facilities that need to be maintained. Other grounds that are maintained by the Park Department, it's not just our parks, they're responsible for maintaining the grounds here at the City Administration Center, the old City Hall, which uh, hopefully will be someone else's responsibility soon, uh, the Senior Center, the maintenance shop, the medians on 61st Street, the Cowboy area, that's that area that's in front of Subway, 
the trees that are along Hydraulic and 61st Street, so all of those trees along those streets, and then the Pride Building, which has Triangle Park, which is behind that. In order to do this, our current staffing includes three full-time employees and one seasonal. We've got our park supervisor, which is Bruce. We've got one park tech two. We've got one park tech one, and we've got one seasonal employee. So looking at the variety of work that needs to be completed, this is a big task for, for this small staffing. So uh, we're uh, recommending this evening that there's consideration of um, and I don't know why that did not change on screens. There we go. Here's the budget for a seasonal park employee. The hourly rate that we pay our seasonal employees are $13 an hour. We've had to raise that. We used to be $10 an hour, but we had difficulty in bringing people in for seasonal employees. <clears throat> So the base rate is $13 an hour, and of course, on top of that, you have to look at FICA and Medicare, which brings that cost up. We're looking at approximately 776 hours. We've got a, a time frame for the employment from 6118 through 1015. I will tell you that's a, that's a tight, tight, if you approve this this evening, we will post a position and we will proceed with hiring someone. Cannot guarantee that will happen on 6-1. Of course, that we, we would work for that. So we would ask for a little bit of flexibility in, in that. But the total cost for hiring someone, as far as a payroll cost, would be $11,359.73. So with that, I would entertain questions. George? Yeah, I, I appreciate the hard work that you guys do, Dan and Bruce. Um, I definitely see a need in the parks, with all the parks that we have and, and just keeping them looking sharp and looking good. Um, I'm in favor of you guys hiring this seasonal employee. Thank you. Okay, Ben? Sure, I just wanted to echo what George said there, Bruce, and uh, to our park staff, I appreciate all you all do keeping our parks uh, up to date, clean, uh, and well taken care of. <clears throat> And so with that, I would like to make a motion that we approve the hiring of a new part-time seasonal park employee to be funded from the 2018 General Fund uh, Budget Park Department. Melvin, did you want to second that? No, yeah, I just want Okay. Do you have anything you want to add? Or you... I just wondering, uh, with all the parks there, you think we need a full-time employee there or not? Well, like Melvin, that would be that would be wonderful. I would say that that would be something we would have to look at budget to see if that would be something that the city would be able to afford. Yeah, and that's at this I point. That's why we're asking for seasonal. Sure, sure. I think at the budget meeting, maybe we need to look into that. So, thank you. Yeah, that's probably something to consider. But I think a, a big thing to consider would be bringing on this person and then seeing what the benefits are that that we see from that. So. If we bring this person on and we see benefits and improvements and things that are happening, then it pleads a very good argument to, to go ahead sure. and bring somebody else on. So I think that's something important that we want to make sure we keep our eye on. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Go ahead. Sorry. On the, we have one seasonal employee already, correct? That is correct. Okay, what are their time, what is the... the do you have a similar time frame as far as like this employee you're looking at bringing on 6-1 to 10-15? What is the time? They would overlap. Okay. And, and the reason that they would is because this is the season that we need someone out there. We have a lot of, of berms and things that need to, to take place. This is our busy season, so we're needing someone immediately. Okay. You want to push your button again? Okay. You might have to knock on your... Okay. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is item D, which is considered scheduling the 2019 budget workshop. So um, I just feel like we had some new blood kind of come on to the council, and I think a Usually we kind of skip past the budget workshop because it hasn't been a big necessity and we don't want to get down into the 
you know, arguing over toilet paper and how much we're spending on, on vanilla envelopes. But I do think it would be beneficial this year if we had a budget workshop and we just sit down and, and look through some of those things. There are some things I know some of, a, some of us, some of you have on a wish list that we probably need to see and, and put down on paper and see what some of those costs might come up to. And I think this year um, a workshop would be warranted. So I just want to get your opinion on that and then see if we can hammer out a date if, uh, if there seems to be an interest from the council to hold a workshop on the budget. Ben. I got it working. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely appreciate uh, an opportunity to have that just as, as being one of the new ones on the council would appreciate that time just to kind of walk through the process. So um, I would be in favor of looking at that. I don't know time frame as far as when, is it generally June when we have start making the the final part pieces to that? Yeah, um, but it, it's always good to start early sure. and not wait until that. To the last few few moments. Sometimes we do that, and then we can't make things happen because we allow too much time to pass. Um, so I think it's important that we try to look at something this evening and get it on the books um, for whatever time frame that might be. Looking here, we have count, regular council meeting the twelfth. Um, I would I would be okay with the fifth of June. It's two weeks away. I understand we're kind of backing ourselves into multiple meetings, but that would be okay from my perspective. So. Okay. Um, Melvin. I, I do think it would be a good deal to have the workshop and go over the budget. Okay. Randy? I was just going to say that I, I do also agree that a budget workshop would be good. Um, coming from the finance world, I mean, I understand that a little bit, but I'd like to get in and understand more about the Park City budget process. And um, Ben, what's the date that you threw out there? June 5th. June 5th. 5th. So, you know, currently our next item on the agenda is to look at the 29th um, for another workshop. Then we have, then we could go again on the 5th and then our regular council meeting on the 12th. Yeah, I'd, I'd be okay with that. Okay. George, were you on there? Yeah, I just want to say the same thing. I'd be in favor of it. June 5th would be fine with me, so that would be okay day for me. Okay. Jim? I was just going to ask for a second here. I'm, sh I'm shuffling schedules. I may have a conflict. Bear with me just a second, if you would. Okay, please. <coughs> uh We don't have to do it on Tuesdays either. I mean, we can shuffle around and meet another another evening if we need to do a Thursday night or a Wednesday night or something. Um, and even if this room might be used, we can use the, the uh, training room to, to hold that workshop as well. My complex on the fourth, so the fifth is okay. Uh, the fifth is all right for me, but uh, would it be too much on a plate to have the uh, workshop on the 29th to do both? I think it would be too much. I mean, and I would steer clear of that because both of those are things that can take a lot of motion and passion from people. And two meetings like that, um, I don't think would be productive. Okay. I think it would be... Most beneficial with it separated. Ben? Sure. Can I go ahead and then make a motion that we approve a, or that we schedule a uh, budget workshop for June the 5th at 6.30 p.m. here at the City Hall? You know, I'll try to do it at 6.30. That was my next question was time frame. Um, George? No, I'll second. second. I'll second that. Okay. Does that work for everybody? 6.30, June 5th? Yeah, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.
Opposed? And that passes 8-0. The next item is consider a special council meeting, and this, this would actually be a, a special workshop, and another workshop on a meeting for May 29th at 6 p.m. for a workshop on the branding analysis and flag design. So our company would like to meet with the, the governing body um, as they work on and organize on how they go out into the community. They really want to get a feel from us first. Um, they have time set aside at this date and this time that they can make a meeting for us. Um, so they'd really like to see if we can't come together for that evening um, and have a, have a workshop with them. George had some stuff at the last meeting that he brought up that he'd like to share. This will be the opportunity to share that. Um, and then, of course, if you couldn't make it, you can definitely work some phone calls where you can get some one-on-one -on -one time and, and let them know. But they are willing to come on the 29th at 6 p.m. Uh, to meet uh, our council and governing body here to discuss this. Brandy? I'm, I'm okay with that, so I would make a motion that we have a special council meeting on Tuesday, May 29th at 6 for a workshop on branding it of the flag. Okay. That we'd have a workshop on that yep. May 29th at 6 p.m. And Ben? Yep, I'll go ahead and second that. I'm excited about this. So. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Not seeing any further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion passes 8-0, Tom. I'd like to uh, let the council know that they've already scheduled a meeting with the chamber uh, June 20th to come in and do a survey at uh, that luncheon meeting. Um, hopefully there will be general businesses there to help with that. So, for inputs. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Next item, executive session. Doug, did you want to cover that one for us? Yes, uh, Mayor and Council, I, uh, I would suggest that uh, the Council move to uh, an executive session for consultation with the City Attorney on matters privileged under the attorney-client relationship related to the acquisition of real property located within the City. Uh, that would be the Council, uh, the City Attorney, the Assistant City Administrator, and the Director of Finance. Uh, and I'll uh, defer to you, uh, Mayor, for a time. Let's say 12 minutes, because uh, usually we say 10, and we always uh, need a couple more. Uh, 12 minutes. Okay. Is there a motion? Tom? I'll make a motion that we uh, go into executive session for 12 minutes. Okay. And Melvin? I'll second that. Okay. We got a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> that motion passes 8-0, and it's 7-33. All right. We're reconvening at 7-49, where no binding action was taken during executive session. And that brings us to governing body reports. And we'll start with Jen. Uh, nothing to report tonight. Brandy? Um, I just want to say that we have the Salute to Freedom coming up. Um, and on June 30th, from 2 to 4 at the Best Western, we're hosting a um, Miss Fourth of July pageant. And there are six different ages.